Last time I did a video about the ENTJ, I got a lot of comments about how I wasn't fast enough. So if you want to put this on two times speed, by all means, you can put this on two times speed. The other feedback I got from the ENTJs in the last video was that it wasn't organized enough or there wasn't one spot they could look on the screen. Um, so I'll just tell you right now, if you go to the end of the video, boom, you got the snapshot, it's all on the screen right there. So if you don't know what a cognitive function is, that's gonna be really important to this video. So Myers and Briggs actually came after what Carl Jung coined in 1921, which are cognitive functions. And these are the eight cognitive functions here. So all of the 16 personalities use all eight of the cognitive functions in a specific order, which really colors the personality. Some of the functions are strengths, some of them are weaknesses. So for the ENTJ, this is the order they use them in, and I've got them listed here as well as their abbreviations. So loosely speaking, this is descending in order of importance to the ENTJ, and also loosely speaking this is descending in chronological order that they get developed within the personality so your first function's kind of been with you your whole life your second function gets developed maybe teens and 20s it becomes a strength uh, your third function maybe becomes a strength in your 30s fourth function a strength in your 40s and so on and so forth um, but by the time you're you know there's kind of some debate about it but by the time you're 16 these are all working in you in specific ways, but not necessarily all strengths. So to add some color to this, your top four functions are what you're conscious of in yourself and what you value in yourself and others. Your bottom four functions, you're not conscious of how you use them, and you definitely don't value them in yourself and others. So adding some more coloring to this, the functions in green, one, two, five, and six, are your potential strengths, and the functions in red, three, four, seven, and eight, are your probable weaknesses. So this is not necessarily 100% of the time, but in most people, this is kind of what you're looking at when which functions or strengths and weaknesses. Now, the older you get, like if in your 60s, there's more of a potential for these, more of these to be strengths, but that's definitely not the default. So if you're like in your teens and 20s, which most of my viewers are, then it's every likelihood that three and four are not strengths. So since your top four functions are conscious and valued, there's so much meat to unpack there. And that's what I'm gonna spend this video doing. Um, I've got on the screen here, this overused, underused strength weakness matrix. And I'm gonna spend this video going through the ENTJ's strengths and weaknesses, which are overused and which are underused. And I'm gonna get really specific with the type. So if you're interested in where I got some of this information based on the top four functions, I have some bullet points here, which are quotes from Carl Jung, John Beebe, Myers and Briggs. Um, and I went deeper into all of this in another video, so I'm not going to go into it here, but if you want to pause it, you can look into that. And so these are just some quotes from the key players about where I'm getting some of this information. So for the ENTJ, their first function is extroverted thinking or abbreviated TE. So extrovert means to turn outward. Extra means outward, vert means to turn. And Carl Jung got the words introvert and extrovert, he coined those terms. He got those from Binet's terms introspection and externospection, which has the same prefix, intro, extra. But the difference is that spect means to watch over. So it's turning outward and watching over what's happening outwardly. And when you think about turning outward, there's a lot of things that you could be keyed into or watching, and for extroverted, thinking, it's keyed into the thinking criteria or logical criteria. So a lot of times if you think about external things that are kind of logical in nature, a lot of times that's logistics, timetables, goals, you know, money goals for quarter two. These are all external metrics that can become very important to the group. So as a group, we're really collaborating on time, we're exchanging money. So this is ENTJ's overused strength. This is your number one strength. This is the function that if you're an ENTJ, this is the function that's been with you throughout your whole life. Um, even as a child, which TE is such a funny uh, function to see in children, but even as a child, probably called bossy or really wanting to take charge from a young age, which I think it's so cute to watch children do that. But this is a function that's been with you your whole life. This is really the water you swim in. Your dominant function never stagnates and it just keeps on going. It's the water you swim in. It's a thing that you have the compulsion to do. Like even if you wanted to stop doing this thing, you just feel so compelled to do it that you can't really stop. So the number one word that Carl Jung used with extroverted thinking is system or systematic purpose or they create system. Um, something that how this can look externally is that I've seen a lot of times they have a very specific task management system, time management system, project management system, uh, anything that's very efficient and it's a way to have not have to think about it anymore. You know, really streamlining things, uh, getting a system in place, a budgeting system in place, a task management system in place so you can set it and forget it and you don't have to, you know, worry about if things are falling through the cracks. Extrovert thinking is a lot about outcomes, ends, product, results, efficiency. So it's a lot about the end in mind. What is our goal? Um, how can we put a lot of effort into achieving that goal on schedule? Um, so really measuring goals. You know, SMART goals is a very TE concept, making sure that it's realistic, it's measurable, you're measuring it along the way, reaching it on schedule. Uh, there's a lot of determination, persistence, 
uh, when TE users are trying to execute on a goal and make progress. So this is not a type that people would call lazy. There's a lot of determination. A lot of times TE DOMs are known for being very hardworking, especially in a career setting. Um, one thing that I think is surprising for people about TE users is there were a lot of quotes from Carl Jung about moral optimization. And I think when people think of TE, they don't always think about morals, but that's something that's really important. And I think this uh, mirrors pretty closely this moral optimization with an Enneagram one, you know, really, really hardworking, but also really wanting things to, to be right and making sure that there's kind of like a righteousness. So bringing all of their behavior into alignment with whatever that moral standard is. A uh, very authoritative, very decisive, liking to be an organizer, like I said, so like even as a child being maybe called bossy, very authoritative. This is a big difference between introverted thinking and extroverted thinking. Extroverted thinking really likes to be the organizer and the authority. And extroverted thinking has a business-like outlook. Like when you think, at, look at a lot of these pictures, there's a very specific business flavor to a lot of these images, and I show, chose them very specifically. Um, but you've got a couple images here of someone leading a board meeting, and so that keys into the authority, this business-like outlook. A lot of times if I'm thinking about TE and I'm thinking about a specific piece of clothing, I'm thinking about, you know, a blazer or a suit for a business setting. So from a young age, just being very good with timetables, with logistics, efficiency, um, not, a, not a big issue with TE DOMs getting things in on time. You typically not a big issue with procrastination. Um, very good with this is the deadline. So I need to chunk back and, you know, kind of creating benchmarks for themselves to how to reach it on schedule. Uh, very externally motivated by others. That's why they do well in a, chris, uh, a career setting with people. You know, if there's a deadline that they need to meet for someone else, very good in that regard. So this function is who you feel like you are. And a lot of times if people are feeling down, it's because maybe they haven't built an environment for their dominant function to really thrive. Like this is who you feel like you are and this needs to be really honored in the way that you've set up your life. So Carl Jung talks about introversion and extroversion and what they give you. So extroversion gives you access to the world and action taking, which is so important. So extroversion is not necessarily, you know, like going to a bunch of dinner parties, you know, having a wine party. You know, when you look at this function, there is nothing very party oriented about this function. You know, it's turning outward, but it's not necessarily like loving to be around people or necessarily getting energy from people, but it's really getting energy from uh, achieving these outcomes on schedule, which could involve people, but it might not necessarily involve people. So extroversion is not necessarily about people. Introversion is not necessarily about not being around people. But Carl Jung just talks about how it's turning outward to, you know, logistics is something that's really important in this case. And it gives you access to the world and action taking. Your next function is introverted. And Carl Jung says that introversion gives you access to the self and reflection. So it's not necessarily, you know, being alone and just watching Netflix with your cat or something, you know, it's about turning inward and reflecting. You know, meaningful introversion is not just, you know, being by yourself watching Netflix. You know, when you're watching Netflix, you're turning outward. But introspection is to turn inward and watch what's happening inwardly and reflect on what's happening inwardly. So just being alone is not really enough to really meet this meaningful introversion. So this function is introverted intuition. So it's to turn inward. Um, and sometimes the way that I describe sensing and intuition are opposites. So sensing is what does exist or has existed and processing those things with your senses. So intuition is the opposite of that. So it's processing things that don't exist. So this could be an idea that's not realized. This could be the future. So it's an internal processing of those things of your future. And a lot of times this comes down to a vision. And the number one word used by Carl Jung with introverted intuition was vision. So this second function is your underused strength. Everyone's second function is their underused strength. And Carl Jung talks about that this second function adds complexity to the type. You know, you think about growing up, you're kind of one dimensional just in that first function. And then as you get into maybe your early 20s, you're starting, you're just starting to round that first corner of complexity and adding some nuance to the type. Where at first it was really focused on, you know, the world and action taking, but then it adds some of this complexity where you're getting more access to yourself and to reflection as well. So this is a function that can really tend to be neglected because you're an extrovert and this is an introverted function. So there's a tendency to want to neglect this function. Um, and so for that reason, it can be really watered down. If you see some of these words here, maybe you just really feel like, you know, that's not you because people's second function can really tend to be neglected, especially in individuals who have not kind of sought out that complexity and that roundedness. So the number one word used by Carl Jung was vision. And there were quotes about how NI users are concerned with the meaning of their vision and they want to transform that vision into their own life. 
So one thing that I wanted to, you know, really key on is that there's like this one path I've got, you know, on the bottom left, there's that picture of this person just kind of winding down this one path toward what feels like this amazing outcome. And there's one vision, there's a singularity with introverted intuition. Um, you know, there's this path with checkpoints in the bottom right, and it's there are things this will lead to this will lead to this will lead to this. But it's down this one path. It's not, you know, chasing all these different things like, oh, this looks fun, or this looks fun, or this looks fun. But it's really meditating on that vision. It feels like you were just kind of given this vision and then maintaining that one singular path. So it's important for ENJs to prioritize and cut out things that are not in alignment with that goal. Um, and a lot of times, you know, if you don't do that, you know, if you're just kind of like, ooh, this looks fun, or this looks fun, or this looks fun, you know, you end up reaching this goal. And then when you are done, you're like, well, now what? And it was like, you know, TE, that's your dominant function. So it loves reaching goals and setting outcomes. But then when you finally do it, then it's like, well, now what? I reached that goal, now what? Whereas opposed to if you have a long-term vision, you know what's next. Okay, this was gonna lead to this, which will lead to this, which will lead to this, which will lead to this. So when you reach a goal, there's not this kind of goal reach depression that's like, oh, well, now what? Uh, there are a lot of quotes with introverted intuition about how it meditates on meaning, purpose, insight. Um, and so the advice is kind of to slow down. Like if you wanna, you know, if you wanna spend time reflecting and introspecting, that really requires you to slow down. You know, you can do that while you're on the move, but introverted intuition is the opposite of extroverted sensing. So it's best utilized in a non-sensory environment, you know, a dark room with no music, with no people, you know, with no sensory things to distract you and really meditate on meaning, purpose, insight, the future, really prioritizing alone time, alone quiet time spent viewing, you know, one thing from multiple angles. Maybe you're, you know, you think about your job, for example, and you view it from this angle and this angle and this angle and this angle, and really just practicing viewing things from multiple angles to see multiple meanings and multiple insights, as many as you can. Um, introverted intuition talks a lot in symbolism and paradoxes. Um, so one thing that I, I thought of, I don't know if this is actually would be useful, but to test it out, to try to find a metaphor of the day, like maybe at the end of the day, you think if today was a metaphor, what would the metaphor be? Or trying to incorporate more metaphors into your speech because it gives a lot of depth and it does require some reflection. And so I think it's a good way to make sure that you're reflecting and also finding meaning. In order to make a metaphor, you have to have made some meaning. Um, a big thing with introverted intuition that Carl Jung talks about is they see like this outlined life path and it's this clear outline, um, like a linearity to it. So if you're torn between two things and one is on the future's life path and the other one is not on the life path, but it's fun, you know, choose the thing that's on the life path more often than not. And so to know what's on your life path requires a lot of meditating. It requires a lot of reflection, a lot of deep reflection over hours and hours. And then once you know what that life path is, then you have a lot more ability to make the correct choices and priorities. So I recommend that everyone work on their second function for an extended amount of time. Myers and Briggs talk about that if you want to work on a function you need to isolate it. Don't try to work on too much at once. Just pick one function and work on it. And I recommend that people work on this function for like five years because you'll go through periods of being motivated and unmotivated. Um, and you could just spend, I mean, you could spend decades on each function and you know, you might as well, you know, spend your whole twenties working on this introverted intuition. Um, or, you know, if you're older than that, then it's never too late, but spend like five years working on this function because this adds so much complexity to the individual reflection and introspection. So I've heard from a lot of people that they feel like when they start working on this function, they're coming home to themselves again, because you're an E N tj and so to not work on this function is to really you know leave yourself and you're an intuitive so this function it can be it can feel kind of scary to go into this function because it's an introverted function you're an extrovert and there's a tendency to want to be in that extroverted space because it's more comfortable but if you choose that you're neglecting the n side of you so john bb calls this second function the parent function and when you think about what a good parent does uh they're responsible they set expectations for themselves they set appropriate expectations for children uh, if you're an adult, you know, you set appropriate expectations for others and boundaries. And so that's what this function really does. It gives you a responsibility. It gives you a maturity. I think sometimes if people get a sense that someone's kind of immature, they're really lacking in this second function. There's so much depth and maturity within this second function. So this is how you can kind of come home to yourself and be a more mature individual who takes responsibility for their life, who makes intentional decisions. And there were quotes about how this second function lends a lot of range and prospect. You know, I think if you're just in that first function or third function, too much extroversion, it just feels like it's all more of the same and it can almost feel kind of trapping. But when you finally get into this function, which has a lot more maturity, all of a sudden things start opening up. There's range, there's prospect, there are quotes about how there's satisfaction and there's so much to be gained with this function. So the third function for an ENTJ is extroverted sensing. 
abbreviated SE. So this is the ENTJ's overused weakness. Everyone's third function is kind of their overused weakness. So your third function is the direct opposite of your second function. So since your second function is introverted, this one's extroverted. Since your second one is intuition, this one is sensing. So extroverted sensing is your third function. Now the thing about these two functions being opposites is they're kind of like a light switch. So the light switch can either be slipped on to NI or it can be switched down to SE, but they're opposites. So you cannot be at them both at the same time. The light switch cannot be on and off at the same time. You have to pick because they're opposites or you can kind of think of it, they're called a polarity. So you can kind of think of it as like North Pole, South Pole. You can't be at the North Pole and South Pole at the same time because they're opposites. So you have to pick. So if you wanna be an NI, you're choosing in that moment to not be an SE. Or if you wanna be an SE, you're choosing in that moment to not be an NI. So a lot of times people will overindulge in this third function and the reason is because it's an extroverted function and you're an extrovert so it feels really comfortable. It's kind of like dessert, you know, it's like comfortable, it's indulgent, it's something that you enjoy on the short term. But on the long term, you know, if you just continue to only indulge in that thing, then it's something that has bad long term consequences and it definitely can feel kind of trapping on the long term to stay in that function. And the biggest issue with it is that by choosing to be an SE, with that light switch flip down, you're choosing not to be an NI and you're an ENTJ, not an ESTJ. So by choosing to be in this third function, you're really going away from who you actually are. So John Beebe calls this the child function. And a lot of times it takes on a lot of like negative characteristics of children. There's like an immaturity. Um, I call it like a bratty teenager. You know, it's got a lot of ego there, a lot of cowardice. Sometimes people will go to this function when they're in an argument or they're feeling defensive or insecure. So a lot of times you'll take the positive qualities of the function and they get kind of twisted when they're in this third position to the negative qualities, or they'll take on especially a lot of the negative qualities of the function. So this is extroverted sensing. So once again, extrovert means to turn outward, but it's watching the senses. So it's watching, you know, in the case of we think about the definition, what does exist or what doesn't exist, is paying attention to what is existing based on your senses. So it's like, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Hear that sound. And it's very keyed into all of the things happening around it. Um, so the number one word used with extroverted sensing is sensation, and it desires strong sensations, intense sensations, unusual sensations. It's really interested in the sensory environment. This could be food, this could be clothing, this could be music. You know, some of the examples I give is like, you know, driving really fast on the freeway with a top down, with loud music, you know, you're getting so much sensory experiences. You know, maybe you uh, grab some fast food on the way, so you got this indulgent food, and so it's really enjoying these heightened sensory experiences. So some of the negative qualities with extroverted sensing the ENTJs will kind of pick up on is, SE has little tendency for reflection on its own. Now it's attached to NI, and reflection is a huge word with NI. And so with this being the opposite of that, it has little tendency for reflection, meaning and purpose may pass them by. So if an ENTJ is too much in this third function, meaning and reflection and purpose pass them by. So the action item is then do not let it pass you by. Meditate on meaning, purpose, reflection, you know, stop, slow down, uh, have time to meditate with yourself to what is your life future? What are your values and convictions? We'll get to that fourth function in a moment, but really think about those things. Uh, a negative trait with extroverted sensing is it can be kind of perceived as shallow. There's not a lot of depth there in isolation. Um, so that can be optics become more important than actuality. So the optics of the business or, you know, maybe they have social media or the optics of things become more important than how it actually is or how the event looked is more important than how the event actually was. Um, this is something that I got from personality hackers. They talk about this steak versus sizzle. And a lot of times they use that an example with NI and SE. So there's the steak, it's like the meat of something, you know, it's, you know, the content of it. And then there's the sizzle, which is that's what draws people in, you know, the smell, the sizzle, you make something look kind of flashy. So for INJs, they can focus too much on like kind of the steak, but they don't make it look attractive for people to draw people in. However, if you focus too much on SE, they really focus on making it look attractive, drawing people in. But then when you really bite into the steak, there's like nothing there. There was no focus on it. There was just a focus on the smell or the optics. So really focusing on the meat over the optics of things. Um, extroverted sensing is really strong in activity, very busy. So one thing that can happen with the NTJs is they take the busyness of SE without the presence of SE. You know, think about SE doms, you know, they're so keyed into what's happening in the moment that they're so present. You know, it feels like they're with you. Uh, with ENTJs, it doesn't feel like they're with you. You know, if you, something I talk about is like, it feels like they have 400 items on their to-do list today and you're stopped 387. And so it's just, they're so busy. And so they're doing a lot of things, they're around a lot of people, a lot of tasks are getting accomplished, but you don't feel like they're really sitting and like resting with you. 
Extroverted sensing has a strong capacity for enjoyment. Enjoyment is a huge word with extroverted sensing. And I think that that's a positive that it gives ENTJs, you know, enjoying things. Um, but that can lead to, you know, overspending on sensory things, you know, clothes, makeup, that type of thing. Uh, partying, you know, too much alcohol. Or, you know, people only knowing you in a group, you know, a lot of acquaintances, but there's not a lot of deep relationships. Um, in general, extroverted sensing can give the ENTJ just a feel of busyness, impatience, scattered, anxious. Um, I think that, you know, we'll get to introverted feeling in a second, but I just, when I am around ENTJs, I sometimes can just feel their anxiousness, just the way their physical body is moving, you know, so, so fast if they're really an SE. Um, so it really can give like an impatient, scattered, it just kind of feels like you know, I have my plan for today and it's these 400 things, so don't mess up my plan. Um, another thing that extroverted sensing, you know, really can be into what's trendy right now. You know, what's the latest fashion, what's the latest music and things like that. Um, so that can come down to, if you combine that with TE, you know, like, like, oh, NFTs, they're really on that. Or when the Clubhouse app was just coming up, you know, really on that. Um, so really jumping on whatever the newest trend is. But when you think about, you know, introverted intuition and that path you have, the odds of one of these trends being on that path is really low. I mean, it might be, it, it might actually be, but the odds are really low. So there's kind of, oh, look at that, oh, look at that, oh, look at that. You know, it's not really the best for an ENTJ. So I've got some pictures here, you know, a lot of times they really, I've, I've known some that really work out a lot, like, <laughs> like too much, I would say. And um, we've got this monkey juggling things, like it just feels like they're on a hamster wheel sometimes, not sitting still. Oh, we've got someone with their head in caffeine, like very overstimulated, really relying on stimulants to get their stuff done. Uh, there's this guy with the spotlights on him, so sometimes it can be just an overfocus on like making me look good, impressive activities. Um, we got some sports, DJing. That's like a good thing that extroverted sensing gives you, you know, maybe an interest in sports. Um, we got this person, you know, running, you know, they're just got all these to-do lists. And I think to the TE user, they feel like, you know, they're juggling it adeptly, kind of like this monkey, kind of looks like there's some order there. But when I'm around them, I just feel kind of this anxiety. And then I've got like this leather jacket, you know, you know, getting an expensive, you know, clothing item. So this is your overused weakness and it's the child function. So it's really important to let the parent function parent this child function. You know, a lot of times this function can be used in immature ways, but it's important to let the parent take responsibility and to kind of order the child like, you know, it's great extroverted sensing if you're gonna make us have fun with people or have a lively environment and have fun relationships, but it's not okay if you're gonna make us anxious, stressed, juggling a lot of plates, you know? So it's important to let the parent say, this is what's on our vision. This is not on our vision, SE, so we're not gonna do this thing. So to really allow NI to parent SE. Something that I've been saying in this series is that I think that a lot of times if people are involuntarily single, so they're single but they don't wanna be, it's because they're too much in their third function. It just lends, you know, there's ego there, there's cowardice there, but your second function has a lot of maturity. And I think that when you're like in the dating world, you wanna be a mature person, you wanna find a mature person. I've known a lot of people that, you know, maybe they were in a loop, they were in their third function, but then, for some reason, they get into that second function more and that's when they find someone. Because there's just a lot of maturity there, there's more complexity with the individual. So finally, into your last function, introverted feeling. This is your underused weakness. So this function, your fourth function, is the direct opposite of your first function. Since your first function's extroverted, this one's introverted. Since your first one is thinking, this one is feeling. So they're direct opposites of each other. So once again, this is a light switch situation, a North Pole, South Pole situation. So since extroverted thinking, your dominant function's who you feel like you are, it's the water you swim in, it never stagnates, it's your number one strength, very often you're gonna choose to have that light switch flipped up to that first function, like a huge percentage of the time, like 95% of the time in some cases, which means you're very rarely having that light switch flip down to introverted feeling because you can't be in them both at the same time. Now that's fine a lot of the times, you know, your first function is your number one strength, it's who you feel like you are. So you should be in that function a lot. But the issue is that it's the tool for most jobs, but not the tool for every job. So sprinkling in a little bit more of that introverted feeling can really do really well for ENTJs. You don't wanna become an introverted feeler, but you don't want the ratio to be like 95%, 5%. You know, maybe you get it to be like 80-20 or maybe 75-25 or, you know, get it to where it's sprinkling in a little bit more. Because a lot of times people have the belief, my first function and my first function only will get me what my first function wants. So in the case of TE, maybe that systems and systems only will get me better systems or focusing on the business and focusing on the business only will get me a great running business. Uh, but a lot of times 
it actually imprisons you and you get the opposite of what you want. So if you focus so much on systems, making sure things are efficient and the system is running well, sometimes subordinates might start feeling kind of resentful. And then it's really this feeling stuff where it starts breaking down. And then you have to take on more of the workload if people are quitting and then you end up being on this hamster wheel where you wanted this efficiently run system, this streamlined system, but it becomes this thing where you have to, you know, it's, you're like a workaholic. And so counterintuitively, sometimes it's that introverted feeling which really endears people to you and makes them loyal to the business and makes them stay, for an example. I've been under some ETJs and when they let their guard down and they show their weakness or they've cried in front of me, that's actually what made me so loyal and what made me a better employee and what actually would make the system more efficient. So this is kind of people's inferiority complex, John Beebe calls it. There's a lot of vulnerability to go here. You know, people don't wanna do things that they're bad at. And especially if the choice is between what you're best at and what you feel like you're worst at, you know, it's kind of a no brainer. Why would you go to this function? But it's an inferiority complex. You know, you're not as bad as it you actually think you are. And you know, it is a step of vulnerability to do something that you're bad at, but I think that shows bravery to step into a space that you're bad at. So this is introverted feeling. So it's to turn inward and watch over your feelings. So introspection based on your values, your emotions, your convictions, your feelings, um, kind of like in your emotional gut. How do you feel about things? What do you like? What don't you like? Um, and this is a really important function that I think is really driving the ship in some cases for an ENTJ, but people are not aware of sometimes how they're, how much their fourth function is driving the ship. It's can be, it's really getting close to being unconscious, but it's not. So something that can happen with too much TE is it can feel like a tyrant. This is one thing that gets thrown around with TE doms in a negative sense. Um, but sprinkling in some introverted feeling, it has no desire to change others. It says, you know, I've got myself and my values. I'll do my own parsing of my values. You'll do your parsing with your values. And we don't need to boss each other around in that regard. Um, and introverted feeling is really focused on seeing the fault in the self, as opposed to sometimes if introverted feeling is not used properly, it's seeking the fault in others, or you're not doing this right. Or, you know, it's sometimes if you have a TE Dom boss, that can happen a lot where you're not doing this right, you're not doing this right. But it seeks first the fault in itself. And then when you've sought fault in yourself and been a morally upright person, then people will respect you a lot more and will take criticism from someone who, uh, you know, who can dish it, but also take it. Um, too much extroverted thinking can have a desire to impress, to be respected. Um, but introverted feeling has a more authentic vibe. It has no desire to impress. Like if you see, you know, this guy doing yoga, this picture of this long hair, you know, it's this hippie vibe that's like, you know, I don't need to impress anybody. Something that can happen with the fourth function is it's completely absent and then there's a spike and then it goes back to being completely absent. And that spike is called being in a grip and it's when it happens to you, you're not doing it intentionally, you know, you're not intentionally sprinkling in the function, but it just, it feels like it happened to you. So something that can happen with introverted feeling in that case is, you know, not being aware of your feelings, not being aware of your feelings. And then all of a sudden there's an outburst of, it could be anger. You know, I think sometimes anger can be a secondary emotion sometimes. So sometimes it's a primary emotion, meaning something happened and it made you angry. Sometimes anger is a secondary emotion, meaning someone hurt you and you felt sadness, but in order to protect yourself from feeling vulnerable like that, you cover it up with anger and you show anger to the person, but really what triggered it was sadness. So in that case, it's a secondary emotion. So I can see that happening a lot with types that don't have feeling very high up. They use anger as a mask and it's a secondary emotion. Um, something that I can see is happening is humble brags. You know, they're not aware that they're feeling insecure. Um, and so instead of, you know, journaling about that and processing that, then the overflow of feeling that insecurity is kind of humble, humble brags. Like, oh, I looked, I was looking so ugly and this guy came up and uh, hit on me at the gym even when I was looking so ugly. You know, so it's kind of like a humble brag, that's kind of an example. That's probably not the type of humble brag an ENTJ would do, but that's kind of a good example for it. So it's showing your sensitivity, you know, instead of this absence and then spike oscillation, just raise it a little bit so that more often you're focused on your feelings so that it's not such a childish expression of your feelings, which is your fourth function. So it's gonna be a little childish, but have some control over it. So it feels like emotions aren't happening to you. So just show sensitivity a little bit more often. Introverted feeling embraces the depths of feeling. So I just said, you know, let people in to the depths of your feelings. And I think you can only let people into the depths of your feelings if you've actually gone there yourself. So whether that's journaling, therapy, you know, a synonym, you know, for introversion is introspection. That's where Carl Jung got the word. So an introspection based on your feelings, you know, really a meaningful reflection in that way. 
Um, some keywords with introverted feeling are idealism, love, justice. So a lot of times introverted feelers, they will make art that's expressing some of these ideals or art that expresses their feelings, uh, you know, painting, dancing, music, guitar, you know, whatever the type of art form might be. But I think it'd be really good for extroverted thinkers to take on some sort of art form. You know, this is kind of the opposite of who they feel like they are. You know, when you look at this hippie guy with the acoustic guitar versus TE, which was like the business and a board meeting, you know, those are completely different. Um, but it's good to sprinkle in a little bit of this because there is this part and this, uh, there is a part of an ENTJ that really has all of this. Um, in the top right, I've got a person, you know, they've got all this messy, you know, emotions and they go to a therapist and the therapist is like helping straighten them out. So, you know, having some routine, you know, art or therapy or something, writing, poetry to get out these feelings or to be in touch with that side of you is really important. Uh, something, sometimes too much TE just feels like the individual is just a goal reaching machine. And so introverted feeling can help you ask, does this align with my values? Do I actually like this? Is this on my NI path? And do I, do I like it in an FI way? Does this align with my values? So that when you reach the goal, you actually feel satisfied, like an actual satisfaction. Like this is building towards something. Um, something that Garrett talked about in the previous video about ENTJs was sometimes it feels like ENTJs, they'll metaphorically, they'll build this building and then they build this building and then this building and this building. They have all these different projects, but they're not related to each other. So instead of focusing on, you know, all these different projects that aren't related to each other, build one story of your high rise, then another story, then another story, then another story. So by the end of it, you have this massive, you know, skyscraper. It's part of your NI vision that aligned with your FI values and this one thing that you're building. Um, I think it'd be really good for ENTJs to develop an emotional processing system. So I'm kind of combining FI and TE here because the FI is that emotional processing and introspection, um, but it's a system. So it's a TE system. So this is kind of a way, sometimes you can develop FI systems and that's a way to get into your fourth function. So I have this here, this is called the therapy journal. And I think this would be really great even if you didn't go to therapy because it's, it's very systematized. So you set a goal so that's very TE oriented, this whole goal thing. Um, but every day you journal about, you know, what would be something that would be good to talk with my therapist about when I see them in a week? So it's to prepare for therapy. But even if you weren't going to therapy, it's still good to check in with yourself every day based on these prompts uh, about how things are going. And then there are writing prompts. And it's just a way to reflect. So I think this is a system to help you get in touch with your introverted feeling. So I've heard that you don't really know someone until you know their fourth function. You know, maybe when you first meet them, you're introduced to their first function, eventually maybe you know their second or third, but it takes a long time for people to introduce you to their fourth function because that's their inferiority complex and there's a lot of vulnerability there. But I love when I get to meet people's fourth function. I feel so honored when I get to meet that function. And it's what really endears me to people. Um, it what's make, it's what makes me really loyal to people. And so I think it's really counterintuitive for an ENTJ, but if you want people to uh, respect you, sometimes the tool for the job is not to TE it it's so hard to get people to respect you, but it's to show some of that FI, it's to show that vulnerability. Um, that's, I think that that's a big step for an ENTJ, but you know, I've seen a lot of TE users like cry, especially like in, once they're in their forties. I mean, I see ETJs in their forties and they start getting into this introverted feeling and they become such more of a complex leader that I respect so much. Um, I knew an ETJ and he said, you know, feelings, you don't want them to drive the car, but you can't throw them in the trunk either. You know, they have a valuable input within the car. And that's like, that's like your fourth function as well. You know, your fourth function is not the leader of the car, but you don't want to throw it in the trunk either. So this is something that adds a lot of complexity to ENTJs. Um, I think adding in some more NI and FI gives, you know, a groundedness, a patience, uh, like a peace, you know, I think that a lot of people with their fourth function, they want to just set it and forget it. Like, Okay, I went to therapy two times, now my emotions are all good now. I don't need to process any of those anymore. But your fourth function is just gonna keep on popping up. You know, it's like it's like the baby of the family. You gotta keep you gotta keep feeding it, you gotta keep changing its diaper, those tasks are just never done. And that's the way the introverted feeling is. So if you can just create a system with introverted feeling, since it's never gonna be completely dealt with, I think that'd be really helpful. So if you're interested, I did just start a membership. So I've got posting two videos a month over there, which the members get to pick, as well as live streams. I'm about to do a Q&A. So if you wanna head over to the membership, type in the comments about what you would like me to do. I will absolutely answer any of those questions, as well as if you're interested in any more ENTJ videos, I will link my ENTJ playlist in the description box. So thanks so much for watching, bye.